Good morning, viewers. It's a new day. Welcome to today's devotion with the Daily Fountain, the devotional guide of the Church of Nigeria Anglican Communion. Invite your family and friends. Get your Bible and your Daily Fountain manual while our devotional leader takes us on today's devotion. Let us pray. Father, we want to thank you for opportunity to listen to your word this day, minister to our hearts, and give us understanding. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. We welcome you, I dare have a few words, to Church of Nigeria Anglican Communion Devotional Guide. Today is Thursday, the 29th day of October in the year of our Lord Jesus Christ, 2020. Today we will discuss briefly God's, on the topic God loves righteous deed. The test is Psalm 11, 1 to 7. I read, In the Lord I put my trust. How can you say to my soul, Flee as a bed to your mountain? For look, the wicked bend their bow. They make ready their arrow on the string that they may shoot secretly at the upright in heart. If the foundation are destroyed, what can the righteous do? The Lord is in his holy temple. The Lord's throne is in heaven. His eyes behold, his eyelid tests the sons of men. The Lord tests the righteous, but the wicked and the one who loves violence, he so hates. Upon the wicked he will rain coals fire and brimstone and a burning wind shall be the portion of their cup. For the Lord is righteous, he loves righteousness. His countenance beholds the upright. As parents, as leaders, as boss, We all desire our children, our followers, our subordinates to do things right. Whenever we see them live righteously or do things right, we are very happy. And uh, today, we are looking at God loves righteous deed. I want to say the same way as parents or as leaders, as a boss in office, whenever people under us do things right, we are happy. Our Father in heaven is also happy when we live righteously. God is a righteous God. In him, there is no unrighteousness. Yes, we are all aware from the book of Genesis that God created us in his own image. After his own likeness. Though, yes, the first man and woman fell along the line. They thank God that the second Adam came in Jesus Christ. If we look at the passage, our brother King David, being the second king of Israel, was a king who desired on, desired on daily basis to live righteously. In the book of Psalm 42, verse 1, it says, As the deer pant for streams of water, so my soul long after you, O oh God. That shows that David 
as a king always desired to live righteously, always desired to do righteous deeds. He was always after God. Yeah, along the line, there are some areas and some points that he didn't do well. But when we look at King David, you will agree with me that throughout the, the psalm, the ones we, from Psalm chapter 1 to Psalm 150, at every point, you will see that what David was always talking about is on how to please God and to live righteously. I want to let us know, our dear viewers, that God wants us to live righteously. God is interested in us as his children to live righteously. Righteousness exalts a nation. Righteousness exalts a man. But I want to quickly say here that because we have Adamic nature, because we have the nature of Adam, it is almost uh, impossible for us to live righteously or do righteous deeds when Jesus is not in our heart. The heart of Adam is a heart that will always desire to do wrong. But when we accept Jesus Christ into our hearts as Lord and personal Savior, you will notice that struggle to live righteously will not be there. You will not struggle to live righteously because you now have the heart of Christ. We can only live righteously, we can only do righteous deeds when we have offered our heart to Jesus Christ. When we look at verse 7 of Psalm chapter 11 where we read, you will see that the Lord is righteous and he loves righteousness. His countenance beholds the upright. God is righteous and he loves righteousness. Dear viewers, I want to let you know that the simple reason why Jesus died at the cross is for us to inherit the kingdom of God. The simple reason why Jesus went to the cross is for us to get closer to our Creator. God in heaven wants us to live righteously. When we begin to live in righteousness, I want to tell you, whether you are a man, whether you are a woman, things will go well. The righteousness of Jesus Christ is the righteousness every one of us should desire to have. When will you think that you can be self-righteous, I want to let you know that you will never please God. But when Jesus comes into your heart as your personal Lord and Savior, he will help you to live in righteousness. He will help you to please God. The Holy Spirit will be there to help you on daily basis. You will not struggle to live righteously. You will not struggle to do righteous deeds. You will not struggle to live in righteousness. On daily basis, the Holy Spirit will continue to help you. Even along the line, when you offend God, you will notice that the Spirit of God will direct your heart. 
also you will confess and you will continue to move on. But what is important is that God desires that we live in righteousness. It is his desire. Let me say it clearly to you. There is no disadvantage in living righteously. There is no disadvantage. It is only sin that has disadvantage. Righteousness does not have any disadvantage. When you live righteously, you continue to attract God. The Lord Almighty will continue to draw closer and closer to yourself. When you live in righteousness, it will reflect in your health. It will reflect in your marriage. It will reflect in your relationship with people. When you live in righteousness, you will see that God himself will ab abode in you. Let us desire to live righteously. Let us accept Jesus into our hearts. Jesus will help us. Let us desire it. Today, in our system, in our society, in our nation, all over the world, it seems that righteousness is gradually moving away. But it is not supposed to be so. It looks as if when you are living righteously or when you want to do righteous deeds, you are awkward. You are living in the 18th century. People want to do things the way they like. People want to do things anyhow. People enjoy now living in flesh. And when they live in flesh, they have a lot of things to say to cover up. Even to encourage themselves in living in wickedness. Men and brethren, if we are going to see God at last, it is important you that is looking at or following us this morning, it is important that you surrender to Jesus and they, on daily basis desire to look up to him. In the book of Hebrews chapter 12 verse 2, the Bible says we should look unto Jesus, the author and finisher of our faith. We we'll keep looking up to him. Jesus will continue to help us to please God. Let me tell you as a matter of fact, the righteous will see God at last. The unrighteous, those that have refused to surrender to Jesus Christ, will not see God at last. What is your desire? What shall it profit you? That you gain the whole world and lose your soul in hell. Can I remind you that Jesus died for you? One good turn deserves another. Jesus died for you. It is painful that Jesus that died for you, you are not following him. And you are interested in following Satan who has already laid down plan for you to be destroyed at last and to cry forever in hell. Let us begin to desire to be righteous and to live in righteousness. As we do that, I am sure that the eternity in Christ we will help inherit at last. Let us pray. Help us to live righteously to the glory of your name. Help our viewers. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen.
We thank you for fellowshipping with us today. We invite you to join us tomorrow morning, same time, same station, for another special edition of the Daily Fountain. If you are led to sponsor or support this program, please contact the numbers and email all showing on your screen. Thank you.